So I've got the project open in Visual Studio, and I want to focus on the graphics, which we played with previously. I'm going to open a regular uh, Explorer window. Uh, just uh, you can go to your project folder in a regular Windows Explorer. Inside your project folder, inside the CBDB folder, inside the res folder, resources. This is where we've got those icons and splash screens. Previously we uh, went into icons, Android, and we changed some of these icons. We just opened them up in Microsoft Paint and kind of drew on them. And so just two different things on them. I want a real icon now. So we're going to spend some time uh, using Photoshop. And I'll also show you some resources for professional looking graphics. You don't have to be um, very skilled in graphic design to create something interesting with some of these resources I'll show you. What we need to do then is from your start menu, go ahead and open Photoshop. And search start and open Photoshop element, or not Photoshop elements, forget that one. Adobe Photoshop CC 2015, not elements, that's the uh, junior version of it. We want the full power one, so Photoshop CC 2015. Let's go ahead and start Photoshop. And once again, just to kind of check, how many of you have had experience using uh, Photoshop in any way? A few people. Okay. So if not, that's okay. We're going to go... Um, we're going to look at enough Photoshop to, to make us dangerous. Now, the icons in the folder are of four different sizes, pixel-sized. They are ping images, PNG, and the best ones have transparency. When we first opened those graphics in Paint and we made some changes and saved it, the transparency was deactivated, I guess. So there's, some, there's a white background behind the icon. If you notice when you install the project on a device, there's the icon and then a white background around the icon. That doesn't look, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look professional. Most icons are the shape and then transparent behind them. Like I've got the Google Play Store icon, which is a triangle, a play button. It's a triangle. And what's outside of the triangle is transparent, so I can see my background, my wallpaper. Uh, these will not be transparent, and it'll have this weird white edge behind your graphic covering your wallpaper. So we need to make ping images with transparency of these at least four sizes. These happen to be named with the dimensions. 36 by 36 squared, 48 squared, 72 squared, and 96 squared. You can also click once, and it might show you down here. 72 by 72 pixels. So, um, 96 is the, is the biggest size that we have here, but in graphic design, if we start with a small image and blow it up, it's going to lose quality. These images are made out of a finite number of pixels. You can start to see them as I zoom in here. See there's all of these dots that make up the image. Little, little dots. So this has an X number of images. If I try to resize this to a larger dimension, it's going to get blurry and weird and it's going to look bad. So in graphic design it's often better to start off with a large graphic and shrink it down rather than a small graphic and blow it up. So we're going to start at a larger size 
and then shrink it down to the various sizes we need. In Photoshop, then, let's go to the File menu, go to New. I'm going to create a new graphic. Photoshop is very complex software. There's a lot that you can do with it. And the first bit of complexity is right here. We're, we want to create a graphic. And it's asking for a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things to fill in. First of all, it's asking, what are the dimensions of the graphic you're going to work with? And it says inches. We're not dealing with inches. We're dealing with pixels, dots on the screen. So first, change the width units from inches to pixels. That should also change the height units. Let's make sure we're working with pixels, because if we change this, if we leave it as inches, and we create 72 inches, that's a huge graphic. I don't want 72 inches, I want 72 pixels. And a pixel is just a little dot on the screen. Before we change the width and the height resolution, we should set that to 72, the standard resolution or quality of a graphic on a screen. So 72 pixels per inch, pixels. And here we're going to start with a width and a height of 512. This is a lot larger than the largest size that we need at the moment, which in the folder shows that we have a 96 by 96 image. But again, it's often better to start with a big image and shrink it down as necessary to keep quality, instead of starting at a smaller size and blow it up and losing quality. Right now we're only targeting phones up to the XHDPI size, right? But we saw in the specification that there is also XXHDPI, and then there will be XXXHDPI. There will be even higher quality sized images. So if I make a graphic that's starting right now at 96 pixels, and I blow it up when I have to make an XXHDPI, it's going to look terrible. So we're starting with a large to shrink it. Um, I'm just already making this like four times larger than I might need it. 512 at the moment from what I read is, a, is like the, the biggest size right now. But maybe like a year later, that's going to be a little smaller. Is there logic behind it? It's just the square size and also uh, 512 is a... Um, There is a division that, that goes in there. This is 512, uh, you know, 72 times 4 or something is 512. So it, they all are factors of each other. So any sort of size would work, but this one, um, almost subconsciously, I see that number a lot in graphics and, and such, so that's the one that we went with. And it is a multiple of the smaller sizes. So 512 pixels, 512 resolution, 72, background contents. Let's change that from white to transparent. Whatever shape I have as my icon, I want to see past it, so I need transparency. The name of the graphic up here. We're, we're going to change it later, but let's call it 512 icon. It's an icon of 512 pixels. This can be anything. You can call it anything you want, but eventually we're going to rename it to be the to be the names of what are already there. Because eventually, either we can name the graphic whatever we want, but then we have to change the code, or Leave the code alone, but you have to change the name of your graphic. You have to do one of the two. I think it's going to be easier to name our graphic the right name eventually instead of changing the code. And the code would be in the config XML file. So 112 icon, 
width of 512 pixels by 512 pixels, resolution 72, transparent. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I'll put it into the network folder just to, uh, to have it there. And I'll put that in the network folder a little later. So go ahead and click OK. That will open a square graphic with a checkerboard pattern representing transparency. Wherever there's this checkerboard pattern, it's transparent. It's not going to be white because white is a color white. But the checkerboard pattern is traditionally means transparency. Anything that is not visible here is transparent. Um, we've got this uh, temporary file which we want to save right away, so we'll go up to File Menu, Save As. This file eventually is going to be converted into the different sizes of icons. But for the moment, when we Save As, we're going to save this in Photoshop format. We want it eventually in Ping format, PNG. But for the moment, it's our Work in Progress file. Just like our Android project or our mobile app project is a .sln project. Eventually when it's compiled it becomes an APK for Android or an IPA for iPhone or I believe an XAP for Windows. But in the meantime it's an SLN file, that Visual Studio project. In Photoshop, eventually this graphic will be a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF or some common format. But in the meantime it's a work in progress Photoshop document. PSD. Let's save this into your flash drive. It does not need to be saved into your project yet. It's not actually for your project yet. So don't you don't really put this in your project. It, it doesn't know what to do with the PSD. So save it anywhere in your flash drive. I've got a folder for this class. I'm going to save it in there. Eventually we will <coughs> export it as the right format into the right place in our app. So on my MAD2 folder, 512icon.psd, click Save. You might get a pop-up about maximizing compatibility. You can just click OK so that you can open the graphic in other versions of Photoshop. We've got version 2014 or 15 or whatever. 2017 is the latest version. And so we want to be able to open this graphic in different versions of Photoshop. Okay, so then here is the best thing and the worst thing. A blank document in Photoshop. You can do anything here. The sky's the limit, but where do I start? There's so much to do, so much that we could do. One way we could use Photoshop is on the left side we have a variety of tools such as a brush. We have a brush tool where we can draw any kind of icon. Now, for fun, we can click on the brush, and then I'm going to make a new icon here, and it's going to be a happy face that looks really weird because I don't have my pen tablet. But that could be the icon for my, for my app, sure. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that, so I'm going to go to Edit Undo. I could instead use these shapes that come with Photoshop. Let's try the shapes for a moment. You have a, you have a tool over here, the rectangle tool. It lets you draw simple shapes, like rectangles. OK, that's nice. But most of these tools have more abilities or more tools built into them. Most of these tools have a little triangle which means there's more here, almost every one of them. If you click and hold the rectangle tool, which is above the hand, if you click and hold it, you have also okay, a rounded rectangle. I can make a shape that's kind of like a rectangle with has a rounded edge. I have the ability to fill the color at the top. 
Maybe I can start to draw some sort of shape for my icon. You have also ellipse, which is a fancy name for a circle. You can draw a circle, you can draw an oval, multiple ones. If you don't like what you're doing, you can edit undo. Photoshop is different than other software where you can press undo multiple times and it'll take you back in history. In this case, for example, I drew two things and I want to undo them both. If I press Control Z one time, it takes back one thing. I press Control Z again and it brings it back. So this toggles back and forth. If you want to go back further in history, that is Control Alt Z. So Control Z will just take you back and forth. To go even further, you have to do Control Alt Z. Well, those simple shapes are nice. Let me show you some cool built-in shapes that are really helpful to create your icons. Custom Shape Tool. So click and hold the rectangle tool that's above the hand. Click and hold it, and then you can select Custom Shape Tool. Looks like a little blob. And um, the shape that I have by default is an arrow. I have other shapes. You have a strip at the top, a context-sensitive options bar, depending on which tool you selected. The, those options change at the top, the context. I go back to the brush tool, I get different options, size of the brush, etc. I'm on the custom shapes, I have some options. So for example, the shape at the top right corner, near the top right corner, it says I've got a shape of, a, of an arrow. I click there and I've got a few more shapes. like this um, fleur-de-lis. If you draw, if you click on that one, and then drag, you get that shape. So uh, that's better than, than I could draw, and that might be an interesting shape to use. Not a lot of them, it, it looks like there's not a lot of them here, but actually there are a few dozen more. So try this. When you activate that shape, that shape panel, you have next to it a little gear, which maybe looks also like a sun or a flower. But those are the options for this panel. If you click there, you can say, show me animal shapes. If I click animals, it'll say, do you want to replace the current set of shapes with this new shape? set of shapes. Just click OK for the moment. You get some more animal shapes. So you have here a cat, or a snail. You have a few little animal shapes. Go back to those options. Go over to ornaments. Switch to ornaments and you've got these other types. Or you can just click on all you get them all. You can pull this panel out to see even more. So here now, suddenly I have a bunch more shapes that I can work with. Let's do this. Uh, play with some of these shapes a little bit. Draw a couple different shapes. Get the feel of it if you've never used Photoshop. Probably have lots of questions. You know, there's 600 page books on Photoshop. It's a huge topic. Let's just take a moment, kind of play with a few shapes, put them in. Once you draw a shape, what you can do, you can move the shape around by using the Move tool, which is this four-headed arrow. Draw one shape. Try another shape. You can move the shape. Just look around there for a moment with some of these shapes. I'll show you other things like how to resize the shapes, 
rotate the shapes, then cool effects like how to add a drop shadow or colorization. There's a lot that we can still learn, but just try that for a moment. Let's see what else we can do with Photoshop. As I said, Photoshop is very complex, so uh, you, you might start to use it and you say, how do I do this? How do I do that? Uh, I'll try to answer most questions, but some might be deeper than I want to get into. But let me show you this, just one moment. While you're making these shapes here, it's creating layers. One object, perhaps, on top of another object. So if, if you see one of your shapes behind another one, you want to move the order on top, just have to drag these layers. Dra click and drag one shape above or below another shape, and that will rearrange them like sheets of paper. <clears throat> so we'll see what more we can do with Photoshop. And then change the background content to transparent. Color? Like, yeah, that, sorry. Like this is background contents. Background color, yeah. Transparent. Okay. So now you have a lot of shapes that you can find that are actually 
so what? So I'll just make sheet and then click the join here. So as you work and you create shapes, you might get different layers. So if you don't want a shape anymore, you can select the layer under the Layers panel and click the trash can to delete it. I know in the beginning you might get a lot of shapes that you don't want because you're figuring out how it works. So select the layer. You'll see that it becomes highlighted in the Layers panel as well as on the screen. When you select it, then you can click the trash can and it'll confirm. Are you sure you want to delete it? And click yes. So let's say I wanted this shape, but now it's in the wrong place and it's too small. So with the move tool, which is the very first tool left, top left, move tool, you can click that and move it into place. And if you want to change the size, you can go to edit, menu, free transform. This will let you transform freely your current object. I've got a shape layer. I've selected it with the Move tool. And then under the Edit menu, Free Transform. Now what I can do is go to the corners of that shape and drag it or shrink it to increase or decrease the size of the shape. If I drew it too small in the beginning, like that, then I can grab the edges and make it larger. I can grab a corner, I can grab an edge, and you can even do this. If you move your mouse near the edge, not actually clicking on an edge, but near the edge, the mouse should turn into a curved arrow. So if you're on one of those corners, it'll be like some sort of double-headed arrow, which will let you grow it or shrink it. But if you're outside of that bounding box, it should eventually turn into a curve. What that will let you do is if you click and drag, now it lets you rotate. So eventually when you've resized it, when you've rotated it, etc., when you've moved it, you want to check, you want to click the check mark up on the top right to confirm your transformation. If you don't like what it did, you can press cancel. It takes it back exactly how it was before you moved it, before you manipulated it. But people often try to do this free transform and then you can't choose anything else because you're still free transforming. You have to click the check mark. That menu at the top changes depending <coughs> on what you're doing. It's not showing me my shapes anymore. I'm at a different tool. I get different options. I need to click the check mark. Now I've drawn a shape. It's got a basic color. Photoshop has a variety of built in shapes that can help us, and we can make our own shapes if we have the time and the artistic ability. But we have these shapes to get us started quickly. And Photoshop also has a variety of styles where we can quickly add a drop shadow, a glass effect, and a lot of visual interest very quickly. If you go up to the window menu, you have a bunch of windows, a bunch of panels. Go to the window menu and let's select styles. These are quick effects that we can add to our shapes. Window menu, styles. Should get a new panel with some styles. Click your layer to select the shape. 
and then click one of these styles, like maybe that blue one or that red one. And you'll see whatever basic colors you have then are replaced with something more interesting. And I have this glass effect. Clicking on that one. It gives like an edge or a blue color. All of these things can be further refined. I'll show you where in a moment. But all of these are found under the window styles. Similar to how we saw a lot of shapes, it doesn't look like we've got a lot of styles. What actually we do? We have options here that will also load up a lot of different styles. The icon is different. If you notice in the styles panel, you have this, you know, this four-line menu. That's the menu here. It was a little gear in the other panel, but in this panel, it's these lines. If you click there, okay, show me abstract styles, glass button styles, web styles. This one doesn't have a show me all. You do have to jump through them, toggle through them. If you select abstract styles, it'll say again, replace the current ones. Yeah, sure. Click OK. You've got a few other ones right here. DP styles. What's that? Looks kind of interesting. So any of these styles that you're selecting is a combination of different effects. You may see that in your layers panel, you have applied an effect, which is a bevel, in my case a bevel, an inner glow, a satin color overlay, gradient overlay. All of these different little effects add up to this style. So if I go over to photographic effects, and I apply that photographic effect, it's basically adding a color overlay with a drop shadow. The color overlay can be edited, the drop shadow can be further edited. If you double click that specific effect in the layers panel, you get another complex screen where you can go in and just kind of play around and change things, see what happens. Yeah, this is not a Photoshop class. There's so many things to learn about Photoshop. I'm going to touch the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Even something like this is already pretty advanced. If this were a regular Photoshop class, this would be a few chapters in the book. There's a lot to learn about the concepts of resolution, file size, dimensions, file formats. We can go, you know, there's chapters in books that every tool here has a chapter. Every menu has a chapter. So 600-page books about Photoshop. This is a very complex software. This is the software that you use to you know, put a man's face on a lizard's body. This is that software that is used to fix that family photo where someone had their eyes closed, and we replace it with a different version with their eyes open. This is the one where you add special effects and create icons and business cards and app icons. Photoshop is very complex. And we offer classes here. The uh, IMCP program, I think, and our other graphics majors. We teach Photoshop. So you may not have a lot of artistic ability, but with some shapes and some styles, you might get something interesting. So I'm going to give us a few moments to create something. Uh, keep in mind that you want to create something here that takes up as much space as possible on the canvas. If you have created some graphics that look like this, when this gets installed into your app, your icon is small. And now there's a small graphic in that small icon. So you're going to have an icon that looks tiny because this icon that will be used in our project is going to have all of this empty space. So try to use as much as possible, edit, free transform, to take up as much space in the, in the canvas 
as possible, so you're not wasting any of that space of such a small icon. Let's do a sort of work slash break time. Let's say until 6, 10, you can take a break, or you can work on kind of making some kind of icon. Don't forget to save every once in a while, file save. When we come back, I uh, will show you how to make some other icons in some other ways, and then we'll talk about adding the icon to the project. Eventually, then, we will work with something like this for the splash screen. So until about 6.10, we can do some work or take a break. We'll be back at, six, at 7.10, that is. 7.10. <coughs>